Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and to another episode of Flute Life with Katie Flute. So I've been seeing this trend on YouTube of professionals answering the most Googled questions in their field. And the other day, in fact, Two Set Violin just uploaded a video where they answer the most Googled questions about the orchestra. And I thought I would give you all the quality flute content you deserve and do the flute related version of this. So without further ado, let's get started. So our first question, why is the flute in the woodwind family? Instruments that are in the woodwind family aren't necessarily made out of wood. Back in the day, the flute did used to be made out of wood, but if you think about it, there is another instrument in the woodwind family that's not made out of wood and never was, and that's the saxophone. A lip reed is how brass players produce sound on their instruments by vibrating or buzzing their lips. <laughs> Anyway, flute and piccolo players produce sound by blowing their air across the head joint of the flute and the embouchure hole in the flute or piccolo, and that causes the air to vibrate in the flute and produce a sound. The saxophone and the clarinet blow air to vibrate the single reed that is attached to their mouthpieces, and the oboe, the bassoon, the English horn, they do the same thing, but instead of one reed, they have two, which is why they're called double reed instruments. Next question. Why is the flute the best instrument? I mean, do you even have to ask? I'm just kidding. Um, of course, I'm quite partial to this instrument, but let's see what people on the Google say. Okay, I found some information here. Flutes are low maintenance and mobile. Have you ever seen a cello player trying to fit their instrument onto a bus or a regular family car that also needs to accommodate other passengers? Like my cellist friends that have to buy extra plane tickets for their instrument. Have you ever seen a violinist change their instrument strings? Um, yeah, all the time. Or a trombone player clean their instrument. I mean, I think the last one is a bit of a stretch. In comparison, the flute is easy. It's small and light to carry around. I mean, that's true. Which means that your child is more likely to pick it up and play it, maybe. It's easy to assemble, that's true. And it requires no special storage arrangements. Just give it a clean after each use and it'll be fine. I mean, that's not necessarily true. You have to take your flute in at least once a year to be cleaned, oiled, and adjusted professionally um, and maybe have some pads replaced. But uh, I mean, it is small and that's, that is, a great advantage. Like I remember in high school, I'd have my flute in my purse all the time and nobody had to know. I could pop into the band room and practice whenever I wanted and just pull it out, put it away. I guess you can't argue with that. But of course, you know, some people might like the sound of the cello better or they might like the violin repertoire better. The lovely thing about the flute is that once you've learned how to play, you can use it for a wide range of musical styles. That is true, you know, flutes can play in jazz bands or orchestras or wind ensembles, marching bands, that is very true. I mean, okay, those are interesting points. Thanks, rentfromhome.com. Okay, next question. Why is the flute so hard to play? So obviously each instrument has its own challenges and none of them are easy. It's not easy to do anything at a very high level, but one of the reasons why the flute is so difficult to play and especially to get started on is because that the flute uses so much air. If you think about the other instruments that I mentioned earlier, the instruments that are in the brass family and then the other instruments in the woodwind family, you're all blowing into those instruments. With the flute, you're blowing across the hole like we talked about before and you're losing a lot of the air that you are expelling because there's just no resistance. So I think that's probably one of the most challenging things about playing the flute. And especially for beginners, I think that they're always a bit surprised to see how much air you actually need to produce a decent sound. I remember reading before somewhere that the instruments that take the most amount of air to play are the tuba and the flute. And apart from the factor with the air, we do have a lot of notes to play. I mean, flute part compared to the tuba part, 
a lot of the times the flute has to be playing a lot more notes and playing in a very virtuosic way. That's not to say that other instruments can't do the same thing, but especially in the orchestral literature, you know, the flute is normally playing a lot more notes than some other instruments. But of course, if you're a violinist playing in the section, you're playing nonstop. So don't come at me. I'm just saying that I think maybe we're up there with the amount of notes we have to play. Next question, why is the flute important? Well, why aren't we important? I would say the flute is important because, you know, it actually is the oldest man-made instrument. I remember writing a paper in middle school about this for some class justifying why the flute was so awesome and important. Yeah, I was a popular kid. So the very first evidence of the flute dates back to Neanderthal times, which is pretty freaking awesome. So it's about 60,000 years old. And I mean, of course, it's not the same exact flute that we play on today. This one was made out of the bone of an animal, but still, that's pretty awesome. Why is the flute so popular? Because all of us flute lifers are making the flute popular, duh. Join the Flute Life fam, subscribe. No, but seriously, I think that there are a variety of reasons why it's so popular. Some are probably um, related to the fact that like we said earlier, it's small, it's portable, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Other reasons, there is a wide range of repertoire. It's a very melodic instrument. I know that when I was trying to figure out what instrument I wanted to start on, I really was drawn to the fact that the flute does have the melody a lot of the time. No offense to the viola. Could have been a violist. Other reasons, there's pop culture references to it. It's featured in the orchestra. So I'm sure we could come up with a lot of other answers, but leave a comment actually, and let me know why you think the flute is so popular. Maybe you don't think it's popular. Leave a comment too. Next question, why is the flute played sideways? So that's a great question. And there are flutes that are, you know, part of the flute family that are not played sideways, but the flute that you're all probably most familiar with is the flute that you would see in a concert band or symphony orchestra and that is what we call the transverse flute. It's held to the side and like I mentioned before we're blowing across the hole in the head joint to produce the sound. And also in the transverse flute family apart from the concert flute are flutes from India, China, Japan, and Korea and I'm sure I'm missing some others in there but those are also flutes that are played by blowing across a hole and holding them to the side. On the other hand we have flutes that are played vertically and two of the most popular ones that you might be familiar with are the recorder and the tin whistle. Why are flutes so expensive? So just like any other instrument, the flute comes in a wide range of prices. So the things that impact the price of the flute the most are going to be the materials that it's made out of, and then also if the flute was factory made or if it was more handmade. So for example, the cheapest flutes are going to be your student or beginner flutes. Those are designed, as the name says, for the student or the beginner. They're normally mostly factory made and they're going to be made out of silver plated nickel. They might even be painted pink, but that's another story. The next category is going to be your intermediate or step up model flute. And those are normally going to incorporate some element of solid silver, as well as some hand assembly along with some factory or pre-made parts. And then the most expensive of the flutes are going to be your professional model flutes and that's where more of these precious metals come into play along with the silver you also have gold and platinum apart from the materials you also have these master flute technicians that are making these instruments by hand and assembling them by hand so professional model flutes can also have a really wide price range with the most expensive of them being really darn expensive but comparatively speaking you know at least you're not purchasing a violin. Next question, why are flutes made of metal? Okay, so according to Google, Theobald Bohm made the first metal flute in 1847. And according to Bohm's Wikipedia page, it says that he was also an experienced goldsmith and that that was a key factor in his ability to redesign the flute into the modern concert flute that we have today. It says that he also experimented with making flutes out of many different materials apart from wood, including silver, gold, nickel, and copper. He also studied acoustics, and I'm sure that has something to do with it. In my own very limited experience of playing wooden flutes, 
there is definitely a difference in the timbre between an instrument that's made completely out of wood, apart from the keys, and one that's made out of silver or gold or platinum. Next question, why are flutes so quiet? I don't think flutes are quiet. My neighbors certainly don't think flutes are quiet. Miguel doesn't think flutes are quiet. I wouldn't say flutes are quiet. I mean, comparatively speaking to a trombone, a flute is quiet or a trumpet, a flute is quiet, but it's certainly not a quiet instrument. And our final question, why are flute players such good kissers? I mean, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to disclose that information. That would completely violate the flute player's code of ethics and I cannot do that to my fellow flute players by giving away that information to all of you. If you know, you know. Okay, and I think with that, I'm gonna wrap up this video. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to answer all of your burning, most Googled flute-related questions. If you did enjoy this video, please take a second and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I know it sounds silly, but it does really help me out. Also, if you haven't already, this is my official invitation to you to become a member of the Flute Life family. All you have to do is hit subscribe. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you.